Hey there guys, welcome back to the VoIP guys on introducing Asterix. Um, as we mentioned at the end of last episode, we are going to take a more detailed look at uh, cool files and so on now. But before we get any further, we messed up last time, we forgot something. Uh, it's come to our attention. No. First, we have to say idea scale and go voting. Yeah, or okay, fair enough. New ideas. This is your new little baby. Well, our new yeah. little baby. <laughs> um, I, I, I created the page, so it's my baby. <laughs> okay, fair <laughs> enough. Yeah, but it is also a way of making sure that you guys um, who have followed us from you know, yeah. tutorial one through to now can actually get what you want uh, in the tutorials. Pascom.ideascale.com. There you go. You've heard it from the horse's mouth. Yeah. But anyway, uh, as I said, we did make a bit of a, uh, a mistake at the beginning of the last one. We actually forgot this something. This was no mistake. Okay, but we, we, we overlooked we skipped something. We overlooked something, which has come we to attention. We did not overlook something. We <laughs> skipped something. Okay, fair enough. Matthias, what did we skip? <laughs> um, you need a module. You need a module to um, use the call files. Okay. But, and here comes the good news. Um, it's loaded by default, so it just works. Okay. But maybe you have an older version or you compiled it on your own because you followed our tutorial. Mm -hmm. And when you compile asterisk, you can say, I don't want this module, I want this module. Mm -hmm. If you just did nothing and used the same version of asterisk as we do, mm -hmm. then it's per default on and it's there. And followed the uh, compiling that we yes, did in tutorial yes. two. That but was there. maybe you have an older version, you have a newer version, they changed something, I don't know, in the defaults. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, maybe. Um, then it could be that the whole file test did not work. So how do we check that the module yes, loaded? Yes, that's the question. Um, we go to uh, our asterisk console and say modules show. And then it shows all the modules we have compiled and started. So maybe you have compiled it, but there is an exclusion list which modules should not be loaded. So you can go there in the etc directory. Uh, but uh, we have to search for the module which is called um, pbx underscore spool dot so outgoing spool support. If this module is not in the list, then it will not work. Okay. So that's what we skipped there last we time to make it more interesting for interesting, you. Interesting, yes. yes. <laughs> and funny if it didn't work. <laughs> So I do apologize if you were sitting there at the end of the last tutorial going, it's not working, it's not working, blame him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway. Uh, right. So I'm used to it. <laughs> on to the more advanced stuff that we're doing this time yes. around. Matthias, we, we did doing? a basic one last yeah. time. Um, it just connected a channel, which was you, to an application, which were the monkeys. Yes. As usual. <laughs> <laughs> and now we want to go a step further. Mm -hmm. and I, Again, just copy uh, an example from voip.info.org. Uh, voip minus, minus info.org. Info yeah. um, and I will adapt it and explain okay. how, how it works. All right, then. take it away. So, test2.call. Again, please don't edit the file um, directly in the spool directory. I told you why in the last video, so review <laughs> if you forgot. And now I just copy this example. Why did you not copy the priority there? Well, because I don't need a priority. Okay, fair enough. So that's the reason why. Um, you can use a channel here again, like we did last time. If you wonder what SAP is, SAP is the uh, telephony API. Um, if you connect ISDN or analog lines, mm -hmm. maybe SAP or uh, uh, the Hadi. I don't know how you... I don't know how to say it either. So the Hadi, mm -hmm. the new SAP, what yeah. does mean the new, I think it changed five, six years ago. <laughs> right, so okay. um, don't worry about this, we will just replace it by SIP and that's it. Okay. Um, as channel, we use again James. We could use an external cell phone, I don't know. Uh, now we don't connect it to the application, but we connect it to another context. So this is interesting. Um, how does this work? You can say like a phone. If you pick up a phone, I explained already, mm -hmm. then it goes to its starting context and searches for a number. Yeah. Um, the same you can do here. You say, go to the context. In our case, it's phones, yeah. where you can find the other phones. And there, you dial the extension 100. Mm -hmm. So you don't say channel zip James connected to 
channel 2, mm -hmm. zip Matthias, mm -hmm. but you say connect zip James to context phones and mm -hmm. there call Matthias. That's uh -huh. important to understand. Right. So in our case, just you will call me. Mm -hmm. um, exactly, it will call you, you will answer and then it will call me. So uh -huh. that's how it works. Um, but you can use any other thing you define. So you don't have to define the application there. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have already a queue with everything or um, I don't know, in some context. Mm -hmm. Maybe you made a context my team or mm -hmm. my queue and there is a queue which is called 100 mm -hmm. and then you can call the queue and then everything you scripted works then. It just throws the call to the context like any other phone which would dial the number. So this is basically how we would do the batch calling that we talked about in the last yes. episode. It's not the cleanest, most attractive, most professional way of doing it, but it is a method you can use. It is a method you can use and it is relatively professional. Okay. Why? Um, you can enhance this scenario like this. You make the call files, mm -hmm. then you say the context is my team, mm -hmm. then you put the calls in there. This is not the problem. Then you can make a kind of load balancing. You copy only 10 files in one minute, mm -hmm. and then you copy it again. And you can monitor how many channels are open and how many new files you can copy. Mm -hmm. Then you can use the other trick out of our CDR um, yep. tutorial. You can create the script so your queue script not only joins the queue, but mm -hmm. makes also some modifications to the CDR so that you uh -huh. know something about the call. So and you have the historical data yes, that you require. You can from. get very professional, uh -huh. but don't do it. <laughs> don't do it, no. Okay. We'll find out why later on. Okay. Yes. <laughs> right. um, it's uh, the spammers tutorial today. <laughs> um, so context is phones, I think. Or phone, phones, I think. Phones, yeah. And 100 is my extension. So what will happen? It opens the channel to James. James can answer. If James answered, it connects him to the context phones and will dial that 100, which is my extension. So this is part one. Part two is whatever is this. So this is also new, max retries, retry time and wait time. So um, you can say, um, how does this work? Two tries, so it tries two times to call um, the Me, target. Yeah, it tries yeah, two, okay. two times. Then how long should it wait until you answer? Mm -hmm. And how long should he wait until it tries again? Yeah. And that's very, very good. Uh, maybe you can say three times for 60 seconds mm -hmm. or for 30 seconds so um, it's and then repeat it after five minutes it's or sort of, after it's half, uh, half an hour. Right? Sort of similar to the timeout in an IVR where yes. you, have, you can set the number of uh, retries for the IVR, how many times the mesh is played yes. and, and how long it should wait until it's replayed again and so on. And again, uh, uh, a top tip for the spammers. <laughs> uh, you, can, you can also um, vary with uh, the time you wait. Maybe the first call file you put in there mm -hmm. waits for only 60 seconds for the next retry. Yep. And then you can read out of your CDR that this did not work. Mm -hmm. And then you can reschedule a new call file which tries it every hour, every two days. I don't know. Okay. Fair Something enough. like this. But don't do it. I can, um, I can see it ending badly for us. We're going to get spammed. Yes, <laughs> maybe. But if that happens, we're going to put you onto the monkey somehow or another. Yes. <laughs> now test it. CP test to call to var spool asterisk outgoing. Now James's phone rings because he's the channel. I will call. Then he answers the channel. And then it will call me. I can also answer the channel. And. You're Co connected. Done. Hang up or press the pad. That's it. Okay. So easy, is it? So, so, so easy, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Um, is there anything more to do on asterisk call files? Or, or yes, but that's basically it. So you connect, the most common use case is you connect a channel. Mm -hmm. And the channel, you can specify how often it's called, retry, and so on. And if it works, then you connect it to the context right. and the number. Okay. I think this is the most common use case. Mm -hmm. In the case of the alarming system, you would have a context alarm. Yep. 
than 100 or I don't know whatever mm -hmm. you could also start with the S extension uh, S uh, one blah and then you can say answer the channel is the first step the second step is playback um, the server XYZ is down. Mm -hmm. And you can have a context for each server, uh, so you can have different announcements for different servers, something like this. You can get very fancy with that. That's pretty cool. I like that. Yes, uh, it's a good introduction, I think, but you can do really a lot of things with the call. Sign. Okay, so what are we going to do next time? I don't know. So it depends on the votes. Let's <laughs> see. <laughs> we'll vote at pascom.ideascale.com. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. Um, there you go, guys. There you have it. So uh, the next tutorial will depend on your votes. So let us know. And uh, yeah, we will make whatever you guys vote for. Until then, goodbye. See you. Cheers.